Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Science Faction. The only show where a scientist, a comedian, and a comedian scientist come together to discuss science. Comedically. Hello, and welcome to Science Faction 356. Science Faction, I call BS. Yes, this is... You realize that you might have been a famous scientist by now if it wasn't for I Call BS? How so? I think the world wants to acknowledge you as a great science uh-huh. educator. Right. But then you take place in this farce of justice and science called Are you I mean me because I, I allow you to continue to play even though you keep losing? Yeah, sure. Why not? That's exactly <laughs> the reason. Uh, and speaking of the reason, I, of course, am your host, comedian archaeologist Robert Timothy. And with me, as always, is my comedian, Mr. Damien Mercado. Damien, how are you doing this afternoon? I'm doing great. I like how you said the reason, like it was like your, yeah. your street people name. I, like I just decided it's going to be like my MMA fighting name, like Bobby the Reason Timothy. The reason, yeah, because, you know, reason and logic are big in MMA. Like, yeah. Okay, all right. Sure, he has a good ground game. Striking's good, good yeah. boxing, good time. But how's his logic and reasoning? Does he make a lot of fallacious arguments? I mean, what's it, how does this work? Yeah, I would actually say Randy Couture's biggest flaw as an MMA fighter throughout his career was fallacious arguments. <laughs> and somebody who never makes a fallacious argument is other than our scientist for the evening, Dr. Nick, also known as the Viking Astronomer. How you doing today, Viking Astronomer? Oh, man, I just feel so cool, calm, and collected in here. It's just so nice. Uh, what a great day. I'm with you, Dr. Nick, because this is an audio medium, and they don't know I'm lying. <laughs> <laughs> what the audience may not know is that it's a boiling 73 degrees in here and Damien is sweating. They say like a whore in church, but uh, there is no whore in I've ever seen sweat this much. Like it would actually be its own genre of like depraved porn called okay. sweat porn if a whore sweated this much. If you hear some squeegee sounds mid uh, podcast, yeah. that's Damien. That's because we were live casting a sweat porn as we're talking. <laughs> no, it's because I, I, all right, you guys got me. You guys got me. I killed somebody and buried them under this podcast studio, and it's just been a telltale heart <laughs> thumping this entire time. I like the idea that we're filming a sweat port in here because it would still be called the Viking Astronomer, but Astronomer would be spelled with like three S's. <laughs> 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 All right, let's move right on to I Call BS. I Call. I Call. I Call. I Call. I Call. I call. Ring, ring. I Call BS. All right, I call BS the game where I read four science news articles, some of which are real, some of which are BS, standing for bad science. They can all be real or all be BS or any combination of in between. Are you guys ready to play? I had heard that BS stands for Bobby Sucks. That was not true, actually. No, I I heard it from some guy. It was Carl Sagan said it. Did you hear it from somebody who won a game of I Call BS or somebody who always loses? The fact that I have said it and I have won means that, yes, Mm, I have heard it. Well, we'll rewind and we'll just go back and see if any of the tapes if you want, but we'll see. All right, article number one. A Polish village has not had a single male baby born in almost a decade. Damien, is this science or bad science? This is science, but it's not what you think. Polish doctors diagnose male and female in babies by whether or not the baby has a beard or not. So <laughs> there have been plenty of babies with penises born. In this so that Polish would mean village. that the, before this point, a pa- approximately 50% of Polish yeah. babies were born with beards? Uh, in Warsaw University, <laughs> only babies with beards is boys. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be funny if that also allowed you to do like a male female twin set and you'd be like, well, one of these is a boy because this one's clearly going to cover for the fact that he's gay. <laughs> I'll say it in wacky Polish accent. <laughs> All right. And Dr. Nick. I'm just trying to picture a nice Polish village mm-hmm. and I'm picturing something rather small and deserted and it seems very liable that, you know, yeah, sure. It could be science. There's There could be no boys born there or nobody born there. Yeah. It's just a bunch of octogenarians. Yeah. You know, what's funny is I also like, I'm thinking Polish village and I imagine like a woman in traditional dress like hitting a rug with a broom that's like thrown over a like a porch or something and in fact it's just probably a regular town just like we live in (laughs) article number two new research shows that cocaine use in the u.s has dramatically increased almost doubling from 2006 to 2016 damien is this science or bad science you see i mean like is it that I started knowing cooler people mm. or like, cause like I, I have noticed a lot more cocaine in my right. life yeah. from my time in the army yes. in 2006 mm-hmm. to my life in San Diego, knowing many people in the service industry. You were a real square in the army, Damien. <laughs> knowing a lot of comedians. Yeah. 
I wouldn't do any rails with my commander, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, 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 we are in a little weird subset of that population as comedians because it's like, oh, yeah, what is like 80, 90 percent of the population do cocaine? <laughs> <laughs> oh, many of my many of my peers are. Yeah, <laughs> they do recreational cocaine, medicinal. They microdose. <laughs> <laughs> they microdose like four or five hundred times a day. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, astronomy is more about the hallucinogens. Yeah. <laughs> I hear astronomy is really a more meth-centric science. I'm going to say science. This is a time we're living in the age of drugs. You can get fentanyl mm-hmm. around the corner. Cocaine is cocaine's like nature's candy now. Yeah, true. All right, and Dr. Nick. I, um, I, think, I think I'm leaning bad science on this one. I'm kind of wondering about supply chain, right? Because mm. Columbia seems like that's all mixed up, right? From what I hear, pretty soon it's going to be on fire. Well, right, exactly. They're burning it down anyway. Um, and, uh, and second, it just seems like, well, I guess, yeah, I'm not in the comedian circle, so maybe yeah. I don't know what drugs are in, but I feel like cocaine is kind of passe now. And it's uh, all about these taking, new synthetic drugs, huh? Damien's taking personal offense. All right. <laughs> You're living in the past. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I do cocaine like my grandfather did cocaine and Sigmund Freud did cocaine. <laughs> With hookers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, article number three. A new study suggests subtle differences in the shape of our mouths can have significant differences in the language of our descendants. Damien, is this science or bad science? Well, this is science, I suppose. Like, if I have really buck teeth and that's just something I keep passing down, mm-hmm. I suppose people could, I shouldn't be surprised if my relatives continue to talk like this. Also, if I have like a 30 IQ, I'm pretty sure right. that will affect my speech and I will continue to pass that down as well. That is interesting because, like, they say that the Appalachian accent is like a descendant of like the Scottish Highlands accent that also like came in and, and gave them some of that. So maybe that is right. All right. And Dr. Nick. Well, I'm kind of curious how you're defining language here. Are we like talking dialects or is this, uh, you know, actual structure? The sounds, the actual sounds that they make. The sounds that, how it's like pronounced. Yes. Yeah, okay. All right, I could go with science on that. I could see that you could, uh, you know, we're getting people uh, pretty good buzzword AI mm-hmm. studies of various facial features. You could try and get a correlation there. That probably wouldn't be too hard. But wouldn't that mean that like enunciation was selected for? So like women would go out there like, Man, the guy who just has the best diction. Ooh, yeah. I get the vapors for that. And not like the guy out there, you know, lifting weights, talking in slang and shit. Wait, how do you think women work? <laughs> <laughs> women love scientists. They, that's why That's why every scientist is rolling in it. Oh, right. Yeah. Well, now, anecdotally, <laughs> yes. the Viking scientist is. That's true. That is very true. All right. Article number four. A pair of Chinese students were hospitalized with kidney damage recently after doing too many squats. Damien, is this science? Or bad science. This is science, and I respect those kids for going, for chasing those gains into kidney failure. That is respect, brother. He basically said, I could have a flat ass or defunct kidneys. I've made my choice. (laughs) You know what? In fact, when you take the kidneys out, fill it with more ass. (laughs) Why not? (laughs) The sexiest ass in all of China. That's a a title. All right. And Viking Astronomer. Uh, going, going, lean towards bad science in here. I feel like you know, just squats couldn't damage your kidney, and it's got to be if it if it is even true at all. That would be something like they forgot to drink water after they did you know a thousand squats or something like that. Right, or, that could mess up your. What if you're squatting into a kidney punch? Right, right, then. right. <laughs> that was my next question. Were they naked? Was anything below them? Was this, were they squatting? But was it more of a sexual thing? <laughs> were they squatting and forced to take a lot of drugs at the time? <laughs> All right, let's go back and see how you guys did follow along at home and see how you did article number one. A Polish village has not had a single male baby born in almost a decade. Both of you guys thought this one was science, and this one is science. Now, this is a small village, about 300 people or so, but they've had 12 female babies born in this time. So that is a pretty big statistical Wait, abnormality. How, how many babies was that and how, what a period of time? Ten years? Uh, yes. So, so about a baby a year. Yeah. Really bustling village. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Again, the old lady hitting the rug with the broom. So this village was just settled by people with like uh, that shoot out a very poor X to Y sperm ratio? It could be, right? So talking about this, we've discussed recently, if we would have talked about this five years ago, we'd just be like, ah, it's one of those freaks of chance, which it might be. Again, this is like getting 12 heads in a row on a coin flip. It happens sometimes. I went to college too, bro. Yeah, it can happen. Like, that's not out of the realm of possibility in 7 billion people on Earth. I think the numbers work out that every once in a while you'll have 300 people where that happens, right? Not a big deal necessarily. But 
we found out in the last five years that some males tend to have more boys or more girls. And that is on their male lineage. It's a genetic quality that gets passed down to them. So maybe this village just happens to statistically be filled with guys who tend to have more girls and that's what's going on. And, and you do a couple more stat math of 12 heads in a row and that's what you get. And it is totally possible, but very interesting because again, it's a, like, in my mind, at least, like an old Polish village. So you got to imagine everybody's just going, witch, you're a witch, you're making them all girls. That's not girl, that's boy with vagina. I'm doctor here. Yeah, you know how many, how many like angry Polish dads are there that are just super pissed about it? They're like, but without three sons, how I ever change light bulb? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm kind of wondering also, like how many fathers were actually involved in this? Is it just one guy in the village? <laughs> <laughs> He's just one of them and he only has girls. No, you... Probably could. And now, could I could I go down to like a fertility clinic, come in a cup, and they could tell me what my breakdown of X versus sure. Y is? Because I know a lot of guys uh, throughout my life, a lot of older people in my family mm -hmm. who had three girls and or had two girls and just wanted a son and so mm -hmm. would try for that, that extra kid or had three and would try for the fourth because they, they just wanted the son. In their mind, yeah. that was something. Sure. I think if you're that guy, you need to be armed with what the odds of what you're putting yeah. out. Like, like, listen, this isn't a 50-50 decision right. each time, man. Like, this is a large financial... Like, if you're just having a kid just for the gender, yeah. rethink this. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and, and, well, and, and what's interesting is nature has these things built in where, for instance, like, in general, our populations, our born populations, are closer to 51-49% breakdown in terms of female to male, and that's general across all, all peoples. And the idea is that more dudes kill themselves. Like, we just do stupid stuff. We go run out, we jump off rocks and stuff. And so because more men statistically will die in their youth, that nature has balanced it out by producing more male babies at birth. <laughs> and then eventually it equals out later on down the line. Also now curious about who's doing this study. Like, who's looking at Polish villages yeah. and how many you know, the children born there? Well, I'm sure what happened is you had people start complaining, and they're like, I don't know, old witch did something. We're not having any boys anymore. Can you fix it? And eventually a scientist got involved when they put a tire around her and lit it on fire, and they had to figure <laughs> out what was happening. Yes, they said, the uh, university sent us another witch to town. <laughs> is that <laughs> Russian? problem. <laughs> uh, should I give, go back to Yakov's here? Yeah. <laughs> All right, article number two, new research shows that cocaine use in the U.S. has dramatically increased, almost doubling from 2006 to 2016. Damien thought this was true. Dr. Nick thought this was false. And this one is bad science. It actually dramatically decreased from about 384 metric tons per year down to about 143 metric tons in 2010. And anywhere from 153 to as little as 108 per year since then. So a pretty dramatic decrease. Here's what's crazy, though. During that same time, overdoses with cocaine relation have gone up. So less cocaine, more ODs, and it's because there's a huge correlation with synthetic opiate overdoses. So people who are dying from fentanyl and stuff often have cocaine in their system. They're not sure if this is just because of the incredible lethality of something like fentanyl or if there's actually a chemical interaction between fentanyl and cocaine that are causing more overdose deaths. But we're using like a third of the cocaine that we were using in 2006 and having more deaths. That's fucking crazy to think about. That's great that our cocaine, like, you know, just as our fuel efficiency has gone up, we use a lot less fuel in our cars. Yes. We're able to get more mileage. Yeah, we're yeah, able yeah. to get more deaths with yeah. less cocaine. <laughs> exactly. The, the only thing is we're getting less deaths per traffic accidents because we have better <laughs> airbags and shit. So is this taking a big hit on the comedian population? It must be, yeah. Yeah, it must be just knocking them out like crazy. I will say, I have noticed there are trends. There are times when, like, cocaine is cooler in the comedy community. Yeah. And times it's not. It's weird. There, there, there's a weird, like, it's like jazz it comes in and out <laughs> so during the same time we've seen a dramatic increase in both cannabis and meth use over that same period of time now the cannabis use is pretty self-explanatory about a quarter of states have legalized cannabis since that period of time so that makes sense the meth is really interesting it might be a mixture of actually what dr nick brought up which is we have if you think of from 2006 to now our border security is a totally different ball game Damien and i grew up here in san diego when we were in high school we used to just ride our bikes across the border and ride your bikes back. Like, there's no ID. With, like, you know, 10 pounds of cocaine. Yeah, the you could. <laughs> there's no, nobody asked for your ID. Nobody asked for a pa passport. What the fuck are you talking about? I'm 13. I've been here to get drunk. <laughs> like, there is, there is nothing. There's just, like, this general acceptance of, like, all right, you're an American. Come on over. And then even up until, like, 2010 or, no, I think it was even, I think it was maybe 2011 or 12, you could walk back and forth without a passport. 
right here in San Ysidro, right? And we have shut down the border so much that we've greatly impacted cocaine importation, whereas methamphetamine, which can be produced here and is easily more smuggled by the Mexican cartels and all this other stuff, has gone way up. So in some senses, there's like a market back and forth, a market economy, where I think a lot of what would be cocaine use is now taken over by meth use. Yeah, well, with cocaine, the big problem is you're limited by how big the anus of the person and how many anuses <laughs> right. you have access to. Meth, again, you can produce. Like, yeah. you're, you're limited by the God's ungiving <laughs> hand to the human anus. But pretty shocking numbers. The meth stuff is always pretty hard to deal with because I, I think one time we covered that it's the drug with the highest recidivism rate of like 93%, meaning if you go to seek treatment for meth, there's a 93% chance you'll do meth later on. And it's one of the only drugs, unlike cocaine and heroin, it keeps its recidivism rate throughout life. So if you quit meth 25 years ago, you're just as likely to restart again. Is, is that maintained? Because I know we've talked on the show about ayahuasca. Yeah. And it's, and it's... It'd be interesting to see what some of those hallucinogenic effects have because they had dramatically... Di- they had like a 50-something percent recidivism rate with some of the, the ibogaine treatments. So it would be interesting to see how long-term that some of that stuff is. But yeah. So uh, if you're looking for good weed, you're in luck. And if you're looking for a good life, you're probably not because meth. everybody's fucking doing meth. All right, article number three, a new study suggests subtle differences in the shape of our mouths can have significant differences in the language of our descendants. Both of you guys thought this one was science, and this one is science. It's an interesting study, and it's interesting how they did it. Actually, the Viking astronomer was pretty close to discovering their mm. their uh, research methodology. He's so, sitting there drinking his cup of fucking mead with a smirk yeah. on his face. <laughs> Fuck you, Viking scientists. <laughs> this study recruited people of different ethno-linguistic origins and had them pronounce the same vowel sounds like e, u, a. And then they modeled the differences in the pronunciation of these sounds based on the shape of their palates. They literally took a 3D model of what their palate looked like. And then they kind of saw how that shape affected their ability to produce these different sounds. And they went, oh, okay, people with this shape palette can make this noise and people can make this noise. They then started with that and then used generational AI learning, meaning you have a new generation here. Now you learn from this first generation, how they make the ooh, ah, ah sounds and passed that down and then used a model for generational learning. And after 50 generations, they had diverged, even though they started with the same sounds, they had diverged so significantly that they would essentially have been unintelligible to one another. Like so one of them created a, a Nell language. Yeah, That's... exactly. Well, no, it's just the the thing. It's it's actually kind of like what Damien was saying. You know, you, if you had buck teeth and you pronounce everything weird, then all of a sudden everybody in Madrid has a lisp because one ruler guy in the whatever century had a lisp, and now they all do it, right? Isn't that why Mandarin and Cantonese are the same written but different? I don't know. I don't know. I thought like maybe one emperor had a like. One emperor had a very uh, big list that he was very uh, – a femin- effeminate list that he was very self-conscious about. So I mean that's what happened with the king of Spain and that's why you know people in certain parts of Spain have that lisp. And so like you could understand how just a little bit would change it. Like we've talked before on this show about how the American accent that, that we speak in is actually closer to the British accent – from colonization times than oh, the modern... Oh, no, no, really? You all saying that like <laughs> Britain, they used to all talk like this? Than the modern British accent, because the modern British accent was created in like the late 18th, early 19th centuries when basically they came up with this posh way of talking and then it got on the BBC and it ended up influencing a bunch of people and they all changed the way they talked. But when you watch a period piece of colonization times and everybody's speaking in British accent, that's totally fake. They sounded like us. They didn't sound like those assholes. Because you couldn't even imagine something like that happening in the United States. If all of a sudden a bunch of people in New York City started talking a really fancy way, they just, we would be branded as homosexuals. I don't they know. Wouldn't, they, they wouldn't like <laughs> I think it could. Me. I think that's how like little bits of weird language stuff spread. You know, like we get that all the time. Somebody will just throw something in. Like I remember the first time I saw somebody put the word fam, F-A-M, on the end of a statement and thinking, well, that's dumb. That'll never catch on. And then here we are in the hellscape <laughs> that is 2019. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, if if it permeated, we would be all talking a lot more, perhaps like New York. Uh, we're walking over here. Hey, oh, <laughs> did the, did the this, stereotype? <laughs> <laughs> did the study include uh, what different like palette shapes? Which I have no idea how to categorize, right. like how that affects sounds. <laughs> Somebody with a flattened palate would think that way. <laughs> so wait, are you advocating for mouth phrenology? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just interesting how these like little quirks can totally change linguistic thing. Um, yeah, so if you're asking like what 
part of a palette allowed them to make what noises? Yes, right. they did correlate that using okay. you know imaging scanning of their mouth versus what the actual sound was that they were making. But they just use that as a basis to be like, well, this is why they're speaking. They're saying it differently. And I actually have a little issue with that. I would think you'd have to do a lot of correlational studies to decide that that's why they're pronouncing it differently. Right. Because maybe I pronounce the ooh sound differently because that's how I learned to pronounce that sound. You know, And so when you talk about somebody who's an adult, by this point, there's so much cultural influence. It's pretty hard to do that just by palate shape. If like somebody had something like this, is this, uh-huh. like, a, is this like a palate thing? Because I don't think anybody would choose... To like slur their s's like this, mm. but yet people do. Maybe they are choosing to, Damien. Maybe yeah, that's attention. Maybe, attention. I need attention. Maybe that's the really cool New York way of speaking <laughs> that you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and lastly, article number four: A pair of Chinese students were hospitalized with kidney damage recently after doing too many squats. Damien thought this was science. The Viking astronomer thought this was bad science, and this one is. Science, meaning that the tie goes to the Viking astronomer. Way to go, Woo! Dr. Dick. <laughs> Another in a straight 356 series of wins for the scientists on Science Faction. You, you, you are a bigger man, Dr. Nick, than to accept this tie victory. I, I am a bigger man. That's why, I, that's why I let you have one and come up with the tie. Because I feel bad for you, you know. <laughs> I'm a bigger man, which is why I dominate and rape and pillage your village. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Congratulations, Dr. Nick, on the brutally fought win. But no, indeed, this is science. They got into a contest over video chat. So these were two university students, both uh, young ladies. They were friends, and they were on video chat. And I guess one of them said, like, I can do more squats than you. And the other was like, fuck off, bitch, let's go. And they got into a contest. And over the period of two to three hours, they each did approximately a 1,000 squats, which is a pretty big deal. I guess they also weren't, like, particularly active or in shape so like this is kind of like deciding to run a marathon the day you walk up to a marathon <laughs> yeah, pretty pretty impressive actually they could do it's a thousand super. off the bat with... dude this is why they're beating yeah. us in math right like they got the fucking motivation uh, and you know it's because it's a round number too they got to like 975 they both thought they were gonna die and they had to keep going I just think the level of spite that these two friends must have yeah. for each other, like, I will sooner go to the hospital than I will deal with her giving me shit for losing this. So they go to bed, like, sore, but like, eh, whatever, it's, yeah, whatever, I did a thousand squats, I should be sore. Uh, they go to bed, and then one of the girls woke up, unable to bend her legs, and then when she had to go pee, it just brown liquid came out. So she had to oh, get- Oh, so pee. <laughs> Saturday morning pee. (laughs) What do you mean? I don't understand. (laughs) So she had to be taken to the hospital to get intravenous fluids and even possibly dialysis, which happens sometimes when people do this. What's basically happening is that you are breaking down your muscle fibers. So when you work out in general, you're breaking down your muscle fiber and rebuilding it. If you do it to an extreme extent, your kidneys can't process out the dead tissue of your body, and you literally go into kidney shutdown. It's like the equivalent of like just putting too many toxins in your body and having your kidneys try and remove them, and it's just like, I'm done. I'm done. Error 404. This shit doesn't work anymore. You're peeing brown from now on. Stop it. And sometimes people literally have to get dialysis for this. She called up her friend to be like, you wouldn't believe where I am. And her friend's like, sorry, I can't talk. I'm in the hospital right now getting dialysis. Well, they were both in the hospital, like cities apart in China from a squat contest that happened online, which leads me to think it's going to be the next one of those like ice bucket challenges. Like it's going to the squat challenge and just a bunch of people going to the hospital. But it'll cure ALS. And sometimes, by the way, this actually can go even further and cause complete renal failure, in which case uh, you might need a kidney transplant. So yeah, how many how many squats is that? I don't know. Be careful, uh, I guess. <laughs> you might think, how come we don't hear about this working out more? Well, one thing to it's think- It's America. Of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> True. One thing to think about is this has to do with tearing and rebuilding muscle. So you're not going to get the same impact from cardio workout, right? Now, you can do other things in cardio workout. You can shut down organs in your body. You can certainly die from too much cardio, right? That can happen. But you're not going to get this type of kidney failure from doing too much running. This is a this is strictly a a muscle building type thing that's going to cause this. Right now, there's a ton of fat kids listening to this, like yeah. like, uh, and they're going to ignore everything you said about except, cardio, except, except cardio except working out. You could certainly die from doing yeah, cardio. I'll better not. <laughs> going to, Sorry, coach. Uh, I got a note for my podcast doctor. I can't I do, do a mile today. I do like that title, by the way, podcast doctor. <laughs> I have to imagine somewhere deep down, like getting a getting a fat kid out of running a oh, mile yeah. in PE, hundred percent. <laughs> 100%. That would be my ultimate goal. That's why I started this podcast. You're a staunch advocate for childhood obesity. <laughs> Fuck you, Michelle Obama. <laughs> 
What's ironic is that was like kind of Sarah Palin's thing. <laughs> that was sort of actual real political point. But it has to be a muscle building activity to do this. And one thing to think about is when you're doing squats, you're using your glutes, which is the largest muscle in your body. And so what they essentially did was break down the largest muscle in their body over and over again for a period of hours. So it is a very specific exercise that will cause this. You're not going to get this from too bad a burn at the gym. But Maybe you not should... the way you lift, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely not the way I lift. <laughs> Uh, but you can theoretically get this from this type of over-exercise. All right, congratulations, Dr. Nick, and thank you, audience, for coming back for Science Faction 356, where you learned about a Polish village that hasn't had a single male baby born in almost a decade, why cocaine use has gone down while weed and meth use has gone up, why the shape of our palate might influence how our descendants speak, and how two Chinese students were hospitalized with kidney damage after doing too many squats. Thank you so much for joining us, and come on back next week for Science Faction 357. But if no boys are born in Polish village, who will carry on great tradition of sausage and incompetence? You've been listening to Science Faction. Wait, that's not right. 